Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I introduced the Maru Q, which is an advanced Mars lander that addresses some needs that I had. In particular, while Starship had aerodynamic surfaces to control the send, and I thought that was very important for accurate landings on Mars, it was really tall, which made it very cumbersome to offload base components. And of course we could use an elevator, but I decided that I would really like a horizontally landing system to offload those things, especially since it would be less likely to tip over. So I came up with this. Uh, it looks very much like the Mark IV space plane system. And the reason for that is because they're both based on the same idea. We have a four meter diameter payload area and then we've strapped some tanks on the sides here and the tanks run all the way through here. And so the Mark IV space plane form factor is basically um, meant for that sort of idea and so is this. So it looks like the Mark IV space plane thing and that's good. I don't mind that. <laughs> so uh, we have a pressurized cabin up front, but it's an unpressurized payload compartment because otherwise it's too heavy. In fact, even as it is, it might be too heavy. It's really, really close. And the sort of, there's a lot of novelty things on here. First of all, there are these engine blocks that can go like that, obviously, otherwise it won't be able to land. Uh, nominally, we would also have parachutes on top uh, so that we can reduce the descent speed prior to landing so we don't use that much delta V. Uh, if we take a look at, uh, we have to think about quite a lot of things when it comes to this. And I'll be testing them out in probably many videos. But right now, our center of mass and center of uh, thrust are not lined up. But we aren't going to be landing with all this propellant. And also, with payload in the bay, we can move it around in order to make sure that it ends up in the right position. But as you can see, uh, as long as we have the right amount of propellant, uh, we can... There's a little bit of gimbal room, and of course we could actuate these manually to... Well, I actually have to give it the ability to have a deploy limit, so some of these things have a deploy limit. I need to add the deploy limit to these so that we can turn them to a slightly different angle in order to uh, adjust the center of thrust. But yes, so it can land like that. And uh, in this situation, we would have... Well, that's not... Uh, we want to... So... Apparently, Earth uh, thrust weight ratio 0.85. That's because it's uh, not got the payload in, right? So let's just go to Mars here. Ooh, gosh, I didn't want to take those off. Okay, so Mars thrust weight ratio 2.2, basically. And that's without the payload. So, but it's got a lot of delta V like this. If we have a lot of payload, we can easily reduce that and have enough to land. So that is the idea there. Now, in order to lift off again, it's going to have to be refueled on the surface. And of course, we're going to have ISR units to do that. And then its center mass goes back there, which is fine because it is not going to lift off in this direction anyway. Though, I mean, I guess we could sort of, but it'd be tough because its thrust weight ratio is now, well, we have to tilt it again. But. Its thrust weight ratio 1.22 is not good enough, really. So what we want to do is make use of these extra engines in the back here, which are actually more efficient methane oxygen engines. They have a bigger nozzle ratio. But uh, these, you know, we just have to make do based on the size of it. I guess I could have upscaled it a little bit to get more out of it, but... Uh, for now, this is the design. And so we need to uh, tilt these nozzles. And then we have 1.79 thrust weight ratio, fully loaded with fuel, no cargo. And we have 3,973 meters per second, which may be enough to get off Mars. Now, uh, the thing is, of course, if we're going to lift off with the engines in this direction, we need some way of tilting it straight up. And so this is sort of the party piece, if you will. We have these skis. You see, and these have colliders on them. But that's a touchy business. 
so it's gear so the first thing we're going to do with this is test it outside to see if it can be lifted up at all you can see the thrust uh, goes through the center mass here we are using the thrust from these four ones at least initially to lift off and hopefully not for long they are somewhat i don't know if you can see somewhat angled out away from the body it's not great but yeah yeah <laughs> okay let's take it outside and see about these skis i've had to tweak them a little bit but they're inconsistent let me put it that way and i have not tested them in mars gravity yet so we'll do that we'll just use hack grav in this case on the runway okay well here it is and here we go ah, oh god oh that's too much oh god now i do have the deploy limit on those skis but it doesn't work very well let's go back revert to launch sometimes it works out and it lands just fine i mean it doesn't land just fine it, it tilts fine but then sometimes it doesn't and it's annoying uh, right now we don't have hack grab i'll try it once again with the full gravity um let me show you what happens with deploy limit instead of see it, it already sort of bounces off Technically, even if we had some angle to it, it would be able to lift off. But this is... Uh, <laughs> well, we got there somehow. Um, right, well, uh, let me just hack grav now. And we'll, we'll lift off for the heck of it. So gravity on Mars is 0.36. However, remember, we have an atmosphere on Earth. And the engines do not work at full efficiency in this atmosphere. So we're going to be under under thrust right now. And we won't be able to turn those forward ones off. And I think we can lift off though. Because, yeah, I think we can lift off. So, SAS on. Ignition. So, and then... Uh, in, where is the legs? Ah, there we go. And raise those. But yeah, so that system is a little bit weird. But at least uh, this is sort of balanced right now. We're not using a lot of pitch authority. Even though we're in the atmosphere, it seems controlled. So it's promising in that respect. But let's uh, revert to launch and see how the deployment of those skis works otherwise in Mars gravity. This was based on an idea. I, uh, somebody on Twitter, I think, posted a sort of lenticular pod that was meant to land on Mars. I think it was a Ford Mars lander designed from the early 60s. And it had this thing where it tilted up on skis and then launched off of Mars again. So, okay, let me just make sure. Okay, hack grab is still on. Let me just do the full normal deployment. Uh, uh, no, it's got too much. I might slow that animation down. That might do it. As far as fuel goes, I've used every bit of volume that I could uh, in order to make sure that we got as much fuel as we could. And even so, Delta V that we have available is very tight if we're expecting to get back into Mars orbit. So it's not going to have much room for payload. You might even want to under, underdo the food, water, and oxygen at the, these levels. So. We'll see. It's got fuel cells as well. That's what the liquid hydrogen is for. Okay, let me try the deployment limit way. But, yep. Uh, for now, this brilliant idea is a little bit dodgy. Oh, gosh. It's gone haywire. So, yeah. That's probably not Mars safe right now. If you have any thoughts, uh, you can provide them, but... It looked good in Blender, it just uh, doesn't quite work out quite right here. The skis do have mass, of course, uh, so that is additional weight we are carrying. Let's take a look in the space plane hangar as far as the masses are concerned. Yep, uh, the skis are 1.56 tons. Considering our, our mass here, dry mass is 21.982 tons, that's a lot. 
and you know I could justify maybe reducing that a little bit but right now that's what we've got uh, as far as the other masses go let's compare to let's I always use the shuttle cockpit let's use Buran cockpit for once it's a little bit more advanced after all which means lighter <laughs> so uh, but you can see the Maru Q is not that huge it is actually two decks by the way inside but that's uh, because it's four meters but as we get uh, close to the uh, rounded parts you would have to duck a little bit and so you see Buran's cockpit is humongous compared to the Maru Q's and its mass is 7.3 tons however that's with uh, stuff inside its dry mass is 5.82 tons the dry mass of the Maru Q is 4.41 tons and wet it's 8 tons so actually wet, uh, well that's because uh, the forward cockpit includes the tanks in this area here. So if we separate off the body, you can see uh, there's tankage mass in this portion. So that's why it's wet mass is high. So yeah, and then the body here, remembering it's unpressurized, is 11.6 tons. And that's basically uh, based on a structural element that extends forward of payload area and then strapping on tanks that are methane and oxygen just aluminum lithium not balloon and then accounting for the heat protection mass the wings and rudders I mean vertical stabilizers are just B9 procedural wings though I reduced the mass strength multiplier a bit they're not super critical as far as things go they're just to give us a little bit more control though uh, right now in descent mode, uh, remembering that we're not going to be fully fueled on descent unless I'm making a mistake. <laughs> uh, and in descent mode, it looks like this. And so the wings help a little bit. But if we took the wings off, yeah, it would be bad. <laughs> so we do need wings of some kind. Oh, oh I fu fully fueled it again. We need wings of some kind for to really assert the aerodynamics of this. Uh, they don't have to be very big. And yeah, the engine pods are like this. So they're the two engines paired together like that, and then there are particular locations for them. So I can shift them around if it turns out that would be more convenient to have, you know, it over here. But there's not a lot of wiggle room on this back one because the RCS ports are right there, and the wing is also there. So we need to, if we need to, we would move this one probably. And these are Schurstrad engines. Actually, uh, these engines are also based on this one. Uh, this is the SE 2008AV. It's a 70 kilonewton engine, gets 367.3 seconds ISP in vacuum. So that's the idea of the Maru Q. I think uh, I'll do another video where we try and do a re-entry test on Mars to see if this is balanced, right? And we'll, uh, we'll work on that and make sure it can land. We'll have parachutes on top and everything. Though I think I'll test that without payload first because the payload can be shifted around. Uh, so it's best to have it all balanced without the payload. And yeah, uh, so it's just an idea where I don't want to offload things with Starship uh, that are base modules. We can just roll them out of here, hopefully. They, they can't be that big. They can't be as big as the ISS modules, of course. That wouldn't fit. They'd have to be like three to four meters. Four meters would fill the entire thing, so it'd have to be three point something meters uh, to give room for the wheels and all. But yeah, we will see if this works out for us and whether it can do accurate landings on Mars will be interesting. So yeah, that is what I've been working on. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.